Hi, I'm Gautam, and I'm a mathematics PhD student at the University of Delaware. And I, I do several things for research, but one uh, thing that kind of one umbrella term that kind of describes most of what I do is convexity. So today what I'll do in the next 10 to 15 minutes is I'll, I'll give you the definition of a convex set. So we'll discuss what a convex set is and I'll try to leave you with some questions regarding them that are of interest. Okay. So I would uh, suggest if you get interested in this, uh, I would suggest just Googling uh, the technical terms that I, I use today. I'll use these terms in a very uh, imprecise manner. My, my intention is to convey the big picture rather than go into the nitty gritty details. So a lot of it might not be rigorous, but again, this is just supposed to be an introduction. So let's get started. Convexity. So let us start with the question, what are convex sets? Convex sets are sets like this, so I'll often denote a convex set by K, are sets like this which have the following property. That if you have two points X and Y, so K is to be convex, it has the following property. So whenever two points, X and Y, so this is the property, this is the defining property for convex sets. Whenever two points, X and Y are in the set, then the entire segment, the entire line segment between X and Y should also be in that set. This is the line segment from X to Y. Okay, such sets are called convex sets. Now let us discuss a few examples. So this notion of convex sets makes sense in the real line, in the one dimensional case. It makes sense in the plane. For example, the picture that I have drawn over here is an example in the plane. It makes sense in space and it makes sense in higher dimensions as well. By higher dimensions, one just means, for example, space is the set of uh, three coordinates, right? So it's a set of points that you describe by three coordinates. And n space is just uh, the space of all n coordinates. Okay. But never mind. Don't worry about that right now. Let's just focus to things that we can see and visualize. Uh, that is dimensions one, two, and three. Okay, examples and let's look at one dimensional examples. So I've got a number line over here. Right. I want to know what uh, convex sets are. First of all, if you have just a single point, okay, that is convex. The requirement for convexity states that if you have two different points, if you have two points, then the segment should lie in there. Okay. So a single point satisfies this criteria trivially. Okay. 
So our single points. These are not the most interesting examples of convex sets, of course. And then after that, if you have any other point, the moment you have any other point, the entire segment has to be in there. Right? Have any other point, then the entire segment has to be in there. So, in the case of the real line, convex sets are either single points or intervals. So these are what convex sets look like. So they have a fairly simple structure on the real line, but as you go up the dimension, you have a variety of convex sets. They can be very different. So for example, what I had drawn over here is a convex set in two dimensions. If you take a disk, disk is convex. You take a square that is convex. And you can generalize this construction. Take any finitely many points, and maybe even over here, join them all by a line. Like you might have to also join this. So any number of points, you join all of them. And then just fill out the region. Right. This is convex. So these are examples of convex sets not to. And of course, you can have a curved part, and then you can have a more flattish part. So there's a lot of convex sets in two dimensions. And same in three dimensions. Right? In three dimensions, uh, a lot of things are convex as well. For example, balls are convex. If you have balls, these are convex. Uh, cubes are convex or cuboids. And so on. And you can, of course, you can again uh, generalize the last example that we discussed, that you take finitely many points and fill out all the lines possible. Right. So for example, if I have if I take four points, this is in space, and I can just join all of them by lines. I'm using the dotted line to denote that it is inside. It's you know like not on the side that you're looking at. Things like this. These are all convex. And convex sets also naturally occur in, in a lot of circumstances. Uh, for example, the tumors like uh, that people have in their bodies, these tumors are convex. But a lot of the imaging that we do is two-dimensional. So one general theme which is of practical value is can one determine the convex set from lower dimensional data. And 
this is uh, one theme that has inspired a lot of research, a lot of research uh, on problems that are of value to the industry, especially the the imaging and the medical industry, that sort of a thing. And also it has inspired a lot of very good pure mathematical research. So let's uh, see some examples of this form. So for example, you can ask the following question. Let K be a convex body in space. Suppose K is a convex body in space. And one can click pictures of K from any given direction. One can click pictures of K from any given direction. Can K be recovered from, from these pictures? So notice that this, this problem is not very trivial because whenever you have a Whenever you have a convex thing right, and you click pictures from one direction. Right? So whenever you click pictures, so you're basically capturing this shadow on a plane. right? Uh, so this does not give you any idea of depth. Right? This does not give you any idea of depth as such. So this is an interesting question. Another way to uh, think of getting lower dimensional data from convex bodies is instead of clicking pictures like this, what you can do is, so let me just uh, change the page. So instead of clicking pictures like that, what you can do is you take a convex body. K, say this is in two dimensions or three dimensions. And then you can, so you move this convex thing so that it contains the origin okay, in whatever dimensions you are at. Suppose we are in three dimensions, it contains the origin. You can always move things, right? You can move things without altering their shape. So for simplicity, let us assume that it is, it contains the origin so that we can look at planes passing through the origin. So, so we can look at the planes that pass through the origin. Right? So you pick one unit normal, one direction, right? you pick one direction, and you look at the plane passing through the origin that is perpendicular to this direction. And you see the part of the convex body that this uh, this plane cuts out. Right? For example, so let us call this plane H U. So U was a unit normal and H is the plane. So what you can suppose this is in three dimensions. So you can talk about a lot of things. One of them being area. So you can look at the area of the part of the convex body that's sliced by this plane. Right. So for every direction, get this.
for every direction. And then ask the question, what does it tell us about K? Right. So these are some kind of questions that people ask in three dimensions, dimensions or higher dimensions. One related thing is, can this data tell us even if one convex body has more volume than the other? So suppose we have two convex bodies, K and L. We have two convex bodies, K and L. So this is K and this is L. Okay. Suppose they are centrally symmetric, meaning that if a point is there, a point V is there, minus V is also there. So again, I'm not getting into the exact definition. I'm not writing it out. So these are the technical terms that you can Google. So now the question is, suppose for every hyperplane, for every hyperplane, suppose for every hyperplane, sorry, my pictures are very bad. So I'm looking at a hyperplane, right? So I have two convex bodies. I am slicing both of them by the same hyperplane. So suppose the area of K sliced by any hyperplane is smaller than the area of L sliced by the same hyperplane. Then does it follow that the volume of K is smaller than the volume of L. Right. So if every slice of this has a big has a smaller area than every slice of this, then does it follow that the volume of this is also smaller than the volume of this? Right. So this is a this is a problem. And so I would encourage you to just think about it in an intuitive way and, and guess what the answer is. And then you can Google or Wikipedia. This is called the Boozman. Petty problem. So these are the kind of problems that classical convex geometry uh, treats. And I think the time is up, so I'll just stop here. But this is a good subject. And yeah, I think a lot of Google searches related to all these terms might inspire you to work on this. Okay. Thank you for your time.